Now it's time for a few texturing tricks. I'm going to add on two new layers here. I'm going to call them base white and base black. And I'm going to fill those two layers with white and black, respectively. So I've got pure white here. I'll fill my base white. Just go to my fill tool. And I only really need the color to be set, so I'll fill the entire layer. Now it's going to look like nothing happened because it's being covered by the rest of our textures, but there we have a base white. And then I'm going to fill in with a base black. Now it's really important that this is pure white. So if I go to my color picker here, 255 on all channels. It needs to be perfectly white or else this isn't going to work. Respectively, the black layer also needs to be perfectly black. Otherwise, it's not going to achieve its goal. So I'll fill that. And I'm going to hide the base black layer right now in favor of exporting the dirt layer. So now with just the base white and the dirt layer active, I'm going to export that color map. Underscore dirt. Now I'll turn off the dirt and I'll bring up my main paint. Now it doesn't look like a whole lot changed because our base white is still on. I'll turn on base black. And this is what just our paint layer looks like. So I'll export that. as main paint. And then I'll hide the main paint and I'll bring up the accent paint. Now you may be wondering why this is red. Well, there's a couple reasons for that. One reason has to do with how this is going to be assembled in Photoshop in what's known as a mask texture. This isn't just any generic shade of red. It's pure red. It has a red value of 255 and 0 in the green and blue channels. This will become important in Photoshop and will make a little bit more sense there. But it's also I made it red just so that I can see what having two very striking colors look like next to each other. Now what's going to happen is that the accent paint here is going to be stored in the red channel of, our, of what's known as a mask texture, which I'll explain when we get to Photoshop. But making it pure red here just saves us an extra step when we get to that phase. So textures export, and I'll call that accent paint. Not accent paint paint, just accent paint. Then I'll hide that. And then one other layer I need is the ambient occlusion. So I'll bring back base white and unhide ambient occlusion. Export. And that'll be underscore AO for ambient occlusion. Now it may be tempting to export the ambient occlusion layer by itself, but that's actually not a great idea because the ambient occlusion layer by itself is actually a little bit darker than uh, the base white. If I were to unhide base white, you can see it's a little bit darker. And then there's one more I need here. And that is I need the I need a fractal noise texture in order to get that hue adjustment that I was showing off at the very beginning of this tutorial. So to do that, I've actually made a special smart material for applying it. It's right here. I just call it Fractal Noise. And it's very simple. All it is is it's just one layer. And it's just, um, I hit Apply Procedural Noise, and then I tweaked the noise curve a little bit. There's no texture here, there's no uh, condition masks, it's just that one 
procedural noise. And what the procedural noise guarantees is that there will not be any sort of texture seams in this particular layer. So I'll make a new layer just for that, call it noise, and I will fill the layer with this material. There we go. So now we can use that to modulate the hue of our paint so it isn't all just one solid color. And I'll export that map as well.